Hey, welcome back uh, to the DevOps uh, 5 minutes uh, series for the demo sessions. And every time we try to give some idea hints about what is expected in DevOps, what are the tools and technologies we are using and why we are using them. Now, today we are going to see an uh, important topic which is like a chef. Now, what is a chef? Chef basically is a configuration management tool. Now, there are a lot of tools in this category. One is a chef, another is the Ansible, another is a puppet, salt stack and so on. So, you have a lot of tools available and you, are, you can work with the configuration management part. Now, the question is why we need configuration management and that is the important and fundamental uh, question that if you understand the why that is very easy to uh, go with the how and what. So, let us try to understand. Now, let us say if you have an infrastructure which is of like a 10 machines. So, for the 10 machines we are very good we can write a shell script and we can manage uh, the infrastructure very well that we want to apply some patches, we want to install some software, we want to do the configuration part. So, shell scripting is a better idea, good idea to go with that because it does not involve much cost, it uh, does not involve much effort. So, uh, general Linux administrator can easily understand and he can write those programs and he can go along with the maintenance of those uh, 10 infrastructure servers. But let us say if your organization is growing steadily over the time. Let us say now you become a 50 servers, then you still start working with the scripting, shell scripting and then you are trying to manage with that. Now, suddenly your uh, organization growth has become a rapid and now you have nearly 500 servers. Now, you start facing a challenges. What challenges? Like how you will do the user management, package management, services, service management, patching and so on. Now, you are started writing a script, but these scripts are started breaking your infrastructure. That sometimes uh, if you have the 500 servers, 10 servers are out of the line, they are not get patched. If you try to create the user uh, on all those machines, uh, some machines are due down due to the maintenance, the users got not created and then again there is a challenge. What is the first part? The non-standardization of your scripts because you do not have any standards and every admin will try to put his own standard, try to go write his own way and debugging and troubleshoot becomes more challenges because those writers have their own mindset and there are definitely a different ways to write same script in a different ways. Now, one script can be written in 4 or 5 different ways and then it becomes a challenge because one administrator wrote the script and it has given to other he may not able to understand easily because he has written in some different way. Now, we do not have standardization. Then second about the framework. You do not have any proper framework when you are going with the normal scripting. Of course, you can write the scripting in uh, shell, Perl, Python, Ruby and so on, but still there is no framework along with that. Now, we are not talking about the language framework. We are talking about the infrastructure framework and maintenance of those frameworks and then maintain of your infrastructure through this particular scripts. The third aspect that we, we do not have with the normal shell scripting is with the standardization of writing now uh, and the security part. So, security is another part. Now, you cannot just go and share the your root password or your MySQL admin passwords or uh, other passwords to other users because they are no wise there are level 1, level 2, level 3 supports. Some scripts are supposed to be run or executed by level 1 engineers, some are on the next level, some are with the uh, next level. So, that segregation is very difficult, that security maintenance is very difficult when you go with that. So, I will say disadvantage of individual in the organization, these are the disadvantage that you can. So, security is the prime and then lastly the compliances. Are we applying the compliances? Do we have proper methodology and standard practices? Do we have the test driven infrastructure? And you will have the standard uh, development infrastructure and then there is a problem with that. So, if you do not have that uh, test driven infrastructure, then uh, there are a lot of broken pieces are possible with that. Now, to avoid all these challenges, 
organization is also have one of the challenges like let us say people are good in Python, Perl and writing very good scripts, but uh, fortunately unfortunately uh, they move out of the organization for the best career they want to achieve and they will start changing the organization. Now once they change the organization, the old scripts, the legacy scripts still are in the old company, but nobody knows how to work with those scripts and that also one of the challenge organization will face. Now then what organization has another options that hey everybody should work with the standard way, everybody should follow the standard practices and this configuration management tools which will help you to bring those aspects into your organizations in your work. So you will have standard practices, you will work with the standard practices and then you can go along with that. Now this can be achieved with the various tools like Chef, Ansible, Puppet, Salt Stack. But in this our session we are going to go and cover with the Chef. Now why Chef? Chef has a good framework standard understanding many of the organization, corporate organizations are going with the Chef there. So they want to implement the standard ways they are going with that. Of course this can be possible with the other tools but in this session we are going to cover with the Chef. So what is a Chef? Okay, so Chef will bring out a lot of uh, good things. So there are a lot of different aspects under the chef. So chef uh, basically goes uh, like what is a normal chef goes in the kitchen and do. So he works with lot of tools like knife, he works with the recipes and he refers some cookbooks and start preparing new new recipes and new new things with that. Similar mindset has been brought into this tool that we will use the various aspects naming conventions like um, we are going to have organizations, we are breaking that whole infrastructure into organizations. Now organizations are the independent unit and they will not share anything with that. Then you will have uh, environment which will help you to get the flow of your uh, system like development environment, test environment, production environment and so on. You will go with that. Then you will have the roles to the given machines Then the roles are nothing but like database roles. Um, uh, web server roles and so on or you can have combinations of roles you can apply to a single machine. There may be a many roles or no roles for the given node and what is a node? So node is basically uh, independent uh, unit uh, in the chef environment it is like a physical server, it is like a um, virtual server, it can be a cloud, it can be a private data center, it can be a standalone machine, it can be blah blah blah, it can be also network devices and so on. Now that is uh, from the organization point of view how that we can manage. From the other parts that what we will do in the chef is the policies. So we have to define some policies uh, so that the node can follow the policies and implement those policies there. And those policies are gone into various areas like policies for the writing policies you will go with the cookbooks. And for the cookbooks you will go to the recipes and the recipes you will have some resources. Now what is the resource? Resource is an independent unit, unit of the operating system with some state, with some desired state. So that the collection of the independent units is the resource and then you will go with the recipes and then you will go with the cookbooks and that is where you will define some policies and you will go with that. So in a nutshell these are the some keywords that you should know before we start with the chef there. Now chef is available in two modes. So one is the standalone mode and you will have the cloud mode. Now where you can get the chef details, where you can download the chef. So let us go and see on the website that you can see that you can get the chef from downloads.chef.io. Now here you can see there is a chef client, chef servers, there are a lot of components development kit, inspection, push job and then you have supermarket concept, automate, compliance and lots and lots of components are available in Chef. So when you want to become experts in the Chef you should familiar, get familiar with these components and go along with that. So for to minimum to minimum if you want to practice the Chef you will need three components. You need a workstation, you need a Chef server and you need some nodes or a node. So that is the minimum thing that you will work with that. So what is a workstation? Basically workstation is your laptop, desktop through which you will control, you will upload, you will do some changes on the chef server. Okay. So and what is the chef server? Chef server is a central piece of integration. So all the communications of the node, all the cookbooks and recipes and lot of things you will put 
into the chef servers and node will follow the policy. So, you have some packages to be on the workstation, you will have some chef server core package on the server side and you will install the node and you have some agent on that node. Now, what this agent will do? This agent will run on the node and it will communicate to the server. So, node what it will do? Via agent it will communicate and it will start getting the data uh, from the server. So, it will download the policies and what will store? We will have the policies on the chef server. So, the node will download the policies via agent and it will implement those policies on the node. So, I have created a, a workstation, I have created a server and we have some agents already installed on the server. So, let us go and quickly see that. So, let us go on the interface and see again. So, this is what your chef server uh, we can have and I have gone with the organization like the Wipro. So, we have standard implementations for Wipro, we are logging as a user as and uh, we can see that there are couple of nodes. So, not couple of nodes, only single node and node is as a web server and it is going on the CentOS platform, it has some IP and so on and we have some policies available on the server. So, you can see that the policies are available and we have one user on that which is uh, we have one organization and we have one user on that. So, this is just for the demonstration purpose, but in real time you will have lot of uh, cookbooks, lot of recipes and lot of things available on the client. Now, how will you work? Uh, you will see all those details, you will configure that and you will work with that. So, let us go back to our workstation. So, I am now in my workstation and I will fire some commands from my workstation like I want to get uh, uh, some of the list of uh, the users. So, I will say knife uh, node and uh, or I will say knife user list and what it will do? This workstation will go and contact to the server and it will get the list. So, I am saying host name, here I am saying that I am on the workstation. Now, I will go and I will implement that and I will be able to see that hey this is the workstation and we will have something there. Now, I want to see the uh, cookbook list. So, I will say cookbook list and I will see some cookbooks are already available on the server and it will give the uh, list of the group like cron, file, user, web and so on. Now, if I say what are the nodes, so I will say get and see me the nodes. Also, you can get the, the details of the node, you can get the details of the node information and stuff, you can go along with that. So, you will say knife node show and we can say that hey, give me the details of the node and here we can see that, sorry, I made a typo, typographical mistake and here we go and you, you should be able to see the details of the node, what are available on that. Hey, this is the node, this is the IP address and these are some recipes or the cookbooks applied on those machines there. And this is how you will go and implement the case there. Now, what we can do? We can see the cookbook. So, let us say I have one cookbook uh, and we will go and we will say that I want to do a file test and I have gone in the recipes and uh, we are going with the file test. So, I will go with the default and uh, here I can see that I am defining some parameters. I want that files to be dummy, uh, root and uh, with the mode and the content and I will say action has to create and we will work with that. Later on what we will say? We will say we will say knife cookbook and we will say upload and you will say hey upload the cookbook user test. Now, I will not do that because it is already available, but you can go and you can work with that. Now, once you did that, what you will do? We will see that. So, I will say knife uh, cookbook and list and it, it should show me that a uh, cookbook list there. So, let me go here and we will see cookbook. Now, already we have uploaded the cookbook which is the file test. Now, we will try to go and implement this file test and we will work with that. So, what is expected that it will create a file and if the file is already available, uh, it will not do anything, but if the file is not there, it will go and create the file. So, what we have to do? We have to associate with that. So, knife, node, uh, then I will say run list and I will add the run list and I will go with that which run list on which node. So, I will say hey I want on the uh, Wipro uh, node 1 um, web 0 1 and I will apply the file test. So, it will go and it will add the cookbook in that. Now, you can see that this has been added. Now, I will jump to the node. So, let us log into the node. 
So, how to login? I will say SSH and then I will say the IP address of the node. In this case, my IP is 23. I will go with that username. I have already created a chef admin uh, on the particular machine. So, I will go with that user and then oh, I will check the file is already there or not and I will see that uh, hmm, the file is already there. So, what we will do? We will remove that file for the time being for the sake of demonstration. So, I will say hey remove this file and go with that. So, okay. So, uh, let us log in. So, we have already logged in. Let us check the file is available there or not and I will go with that uh, dummy dot text. Okay. So, the file is already there. So, I will remove that file and uh, for the demonstration purpose uh, we will remove this file and what we will do we will try to run the chef uh, recipe and chef cookbook and let us see that. So, I will say hey go with that sudo uh, chef client and it is expected that after the end of the chef client we should able to get the file because we have removed the file. Now, as we it will implement the policies and it will restore the file whatever the details we have given with the username, with the group, with the mode and the content. So, now what it is doing? It is going through the uh, cookbooks, it is going through the recipes and it is trying to go and check that hey this package is installed or not, is these things are available or not and then it will go with that. So, this is how in real time you will work with that, but in real time instead of one cookbook and one node you may have hundreds of cookbooks, thousands of cookbooks and you may have hundreds of nodes and you have to work with that and you need to manage those resources. So, in real time we will have lot of cookbooks, lot of nodes and we will manage with that. Now, let us go and see that is the file is created. Now, here the message says that it has created the new file dummy.txt and it has set the permissions, the ownership and the group. Let us go and check that. If I say ls l the file uh, dummy.txt and wow we have the file and we can see that the permission is uh, 644 we have the owner and we have the uh, group there. So, that is how we will go with that. Let us go and check the content and can we see the content and yes whatever the contents we have said we will go with that. So, thanks for watching this video. So, this is all about the demonstration of uh, the chef and little capabilities we are not going with the very details, but it will help you to just get the glimpse uh, that what we are trying to achieve with the chef. So, chef is a very good configuration management tool and in our series not here, but in our class we will go in very deep down with the chef, we go with the hands on with the installation of the chef server, installation of the workstation and going with the bootstrap of the nodes and lots and lots of details like attributes and working with the templates and managing the cookbooks in a very big way. So, thanks for joining. Please watch our series continuously. Hope you enjoy the series. Hope you got a little bit idea what we are trying to do and thanks and have a nice day. Mm -hmm.